tractor, a wagon. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and call the uh, fourth meeting. Or is it fourth? Anyway, uh, to order. Uh, it's uh, Monday, June 9th. And Lisa, can you take roll call, please? Jim Ager. Here. Ted Bowman. Susan Dolan. Here. Janet Emerson. Here. Lisa Emerson. Here. Jason Green. Here. Steve Gunther. Here. Sandra Hartwell. Here. Michael McDonough. Here. Charlotte Wilson. Here. Mark Moore. Here. Reggie Van Buster. Here. Greg Walters. Here. All right. Uh, we will now open up the meeting for any public comment. Do you have anything, Randy? Mike? If not, we'll uh, continue on with the meeting. Okay, there you go. Testing. Testing. Oh, well, I've got to laugh over seconds. Last week, I wanted to mention that I thought that adding term limits to the charter would be a bad idea on two levels. <coughs> the first level is getting the charter passed. Anytime you add something controversial, even if it's favorable, even if it takes a 55 or 60 40, it doesn't make the 60 come to your side, but it does make the 40 vote against you. The second part of it is it's hard to find two good, 10 good people that want the job. And really, uh, if we've got a good alderman, I don't see any reason to throw them away. I've seen this on the state level, and John do on partisan, but I try to keep that out of breaking them online. But I've seen a declining quality of the state reps from both parties after the Missouri implemented the term limits. Because we lost some good people. We lost Bill Boucher, uh, a great state rep, because of term limits. And we don't always get lucky with the replacement. Anyway, I think your term limits are for people who decide the ballot box. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. All right, any other public comments at this time? All right, we'll go ahead and proceed with uh, our officer's reports. Uh, well, that's the first thing approval of minutes. I'm sure everybody's had a chance to read them. At least have them out several times. Yes, Mike. All right, sorry. Great. Uh, I do have an addition to the minutes. I do have an addition to the minutes. Um, I had asked during the meeting, at the beginning of the meeting, that a copy of the 2005 budget be obtained from the city clerk's office. And though there was no formal motion made, you indicated that you were going to have that done. And it's not in the minutes. So I, I'd like to have that included into the minutes. Do you know exactly, you know exactly when you had spoken? I remember it too, now that you're talking about it. I watched the last one like this. Okay. All right, because we did did get did get some information from Teresa so far. So progress. It's progress. Stepping in the right direction. You have to point out what happens. Well, Lisa was able to get a partial answer anyway. There's a lot of information there. Okay. Thank you. Like, but we'll go ahead and include it in too. Uh, um, I need to have a suggestion for it. It was very early in the meeting. It was during our first uh, discussion that I and Sharon had earlier in the meeting. So, where it says Greg Walters and why does this decide to put what's playing and how much it would be, how it would be comfortable for each other? What did you say is before or after that? It was, it was the final request. Right. It, it, was, it was following um, that information before we went on to the next item. Um, how much money do you need? I wrote down some notes. I can send them down to you. Okay. I mean, have to, we either have to approve them now or wait till the next Certainly. 
Uh, Greg Walters requested that a copy of the 2005 version be obtained from the city clerk's office. And my uh, 2005 version of the charter. And we'll have to get that in you know, and you can just go through it. In response, Mr. Gunther said uh, the city clerk would be asked for the 2005 budget. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, include that amendment to the current minutes. Yes. Um, I was looking for Ted Bowen's suggestion on the uh, preamble, and it's not included in the minutes. I would like to see that in writing. Do you remember exactly what that was? I did. I remember that. Okay. Um, No, he, he never passed a copy of that out, but uh, he was supposed to, I think he was going to bring it up, but I'm not absolutely sure. Well, what he, was, what he said he would do is he would amend, or he would rewrite it and begin to get that passed on to Lisa so that she could go ahead and include it with the current drafts that we are we'll be reviewing tonight. Yeah, everything I got, everything I received from him is as far as I understand, that was the bulk of what he had to say. It didn't really count anything extra that I'm aware of. And so I put everything that I got from our discussions into my copy of the thing I sent out last night. One of my suggestions I sent out last night. We're talking about this? Oh, yes. Sandy, I'm sure we can go ahead and get. <coughs> That original knows he's just not going to be here this evening. <coughs> okay. Um, I'm going to take a motion to approve the amendment. A minute minutes. So Lisa, go ahead and take a roll call. Would everybody, excuse me, would everybody like a roll call vote or a testimonial yay or all day? Secret. 
complaints here. Uh, I believe the commission needs to decide on how many pages the charter has or will have. Got to give me a, a number to go by. Uh, how many hard copies to produce for public access and placement of the areas? So, how many words are within each article? That will dictate how many pages are printed. Uh, do we print both sides of one page or just the face? We got marketing brochures. And of course, number six is that brochure trifold, single fold, color, black and white. All these cost money. I'll give you an idea of what the. Uh, I solicited a few bids for printing black and white. The prices ran from two cents to 19 cents per page. That's 5,000 pages minimum. <coughs> Excuse me. So, as, as you see, it's going to cost a little bit of money to do this. We all know that. But what I want to know is, uh, within the commission, if everybody would decide how many uh, charters we're going to print for the public. Uh, we've got 30,000 folks. We're going to print 30,000 copies at uh, $3 a piece. Uh, pretty much because if we have 50 pages, say, at 10 cents per page, at 50 pages, it's not much for a copy. So I'm open for discussion on that, Mr. Chairman. I think that the commission itself should decide how many copies we're going to make to begin with. That will give us an idea of our dollars, where we're going to take this thing. Uh, we can run $50,000 for printing if we want to print everybody a copy. So there's quite a bit here to, uh, to think about. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't think we need to send multiple copies to a household. If there's three voters in that household, we send them one copy. Uh, <clears throat> was it uh, at the last charter, how many, Greg, or Jim, Brooke said on how many copies were produced? Well, I, I don't remember how many were produced. I do know they used them all. Some of them disappeared. Uh, I won't, go, I won't dwell on that. Um, the, uh, the difference, I, there's so many variables that you can do. I'm in the printing business, and I think most of you know that. Um, the uh, difference between, for instance, a five and a half, eight and a half inch book, and a six by nine inch book is minimal. So you could get a little bit more out that way. If you're mailing them, you could mail them. Uh, we didn't mail them last time we had. We created public drop off places for people pick them up and people did take advantage of places like the library, drug stores, um, different locations. If you want to direct mail to frequent voters, uh, those that traditionally vote, uh, you're probably going to spend about, you keep your weight down to about 22 cents, uh, two, two ounces each, you're going to spend about 22 cents a pop on postage, probably about three and a half cents a pop on, uh, uh, three and a half cents each, I'm sorry, on, uh, uh, Mail has handed the charges. Your production, if you go black and white, plain grade book, which is what we did last time, it, as, uh, as he stated, it depends on how big the book is. It's, it's very automated nowadays as to how to produce these things, so um, it, can be, it, it can be less than terribly expensive. Uh, the letter should have figures from last time because those are line items. If, if, did you? What Teresa got for you, did it have anything on there in the printing cost? Um, it was a gigantic box and it would take a long time to sort through. I sat there for a while, but we're going to try to figure out what we were going to print for him a lot more. So, um, you need some help. I want to figure out as well for you. I haven't, I, I haven't been able to figure out exactly what spot because there's just so much. I could probably help you with that. Where, uh, Where's the box? In her office. Can we take it out of her office? No. Let's see if she'll allow us to take it out of her office because well, it's not hers. Well, she is going to photocopy wherever we'd like, she said. So, um, for what purpose? Our I'm purpose. just curious. I, you know, I, to me, I just see, I just see, you know, it's kind of like you have this situation where, okay, we're going to start with this little mold and we're going to turn it into a mountain by the end of the day. And when I, I see, okay, yes, you can come and look at this, but you can't leave the office with it. 
yes, you can have copies of it, but we'll make copies of it for you. She didn't care enough to file it. She just throws it into a box to store it. And it's from over, what, nine years ago? I, I don't know, it's very frustrating to me when I see stuff like this happen. It is, a it is property in cities, is it not? No. <clears throat> it's not? It was, it was property in charge, which is. Yes. That's right. Um, Mr. Hunter? Yes. If we decided as a male, there's approximately 500 homes here that are paid for you um, in the city of Rizzo. Um Now, that probably does not count. Any apartments or you know, multiple, so it wouldn't, you wouldn't need 30,000 copies of that. Well, I would hope not. Uh, I, I have looked at a lot of charters and they seem to run somewhere around 30 to 35 pages. So, I mean, we can, I think we can assume that we should be relatively close to that. Uh, if we use an estimate of 35 or so. Um, but from there, we can uh, uh, try to determine how many copies we're going to need of it. But I mean, to try to send one out to every resident voter, I would have a concern with doing that. And how do you select which ones will come to vote, which ones won't? I think we, what we do is what we, uh, well, I'm going to suggest that we try to make copies available in locations similar to what the last charter did, but, but actually do a little bit better job of marketing for the charter when we get finished with it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, James. Um, I, I don't remember what the exact last census said in terms of the population of, of Raytown, but um, I think 10 years ago was, uh, 14 years ago was 33,000, I think, or under 30. Um, I'm pretty sure that all 30,000 can't read. Um, if there were every single person that had a had a copy, um, I'm pretty sure the elementary kids would probably not read it. So to throw out a number of 30,000 would be just a little bit ludicrous. Um, I do think that the key question is, in terms of numbers or practicality or the number of people um, they're going to actually vote. The registered voters um, uh, are the only ones that can vote to start with, and then you have a clear difference between a major election. Um, I mean, I've gone door to door like other members of this um, commission have, and, and, and there's a lot of people that would just come up front and tell you, I only vote in a major election. So uh, when we put this up for a vote, I think it would be a deciding factor on how many, uh, because normally uh, it would be extremely high to have 20% of the people, uh, of the registered voters, actually um, show up. I think last election it was something like 16, 14%. So uh, that's quite a lot less than, than one for every person occupying a home in Raytown. Um, so, I mean, and I think it's something we can think about and research over the next few weeks to come up with a more reasonable amount. All right, I'll let this other thing talk for a while. Go ahead, Susan. I, uh, my suggestion, and, and there it goes, my suggestion would be to look at those who were active voters in the November 2013 election. And uh, mail to those households, one from the household of active voters from the last November election. Um, printing this in 12 point type, two sided, black and white, would help the customer. Go ahead, Jason. Well, I, mean, I, I think we can come up here and debate a lot of the strategy and such all, all night. I mean, there's a fall order here. I mean, we're not even talking about just the printing, we're talking about the marketing of this. Uh, in terms of mailers, in terms of informing folks that there is a charter election, things like that. So there's there's a lot of things to discuss with this beyond just the printing of the actual charters. Um, I do appreciate Mr. Moore's last suggestion here, um, asking should there be a marketing committee in place of some sort to facilitate this conversation. I think it would be wise 
to not debate on the semantics of this tonight, but to have a committee of some, some sort to come up with a plan to then present that to this commission as a whole and then discuss it then. That would be a suggestion that I would have. So I'll uh, leave it at that. Yeah. Well, when the last charter was presented, uh, there was not email. And I would think a lot of people would want it in email instead of a paper copy. And there might be a way that maybe the newspaper could, um, you know, put out a thing. If you'd like an email copy instead of a paper copy, <coughs> then we'll be glad to send that to you. Please send us your email address. Well, it's going to be very hard right now to do an itemized cost of anything because we don't know. And so, when you're doing a budget, you're doing a budget that can be um, evaluated later on when you get closer to. We have 50 pages, and we know we've got 50 pages, and we'll know that closer to the end of it. So, a budget is just an estimate of cost. So, that's all we have to do is just come up with kind of some of those line items to have an estimate of cost because as we get closer and down the line, We'll know, and if we need to adjust those costs, we can do that later. I think we need to look at the voting list um, that we of the election we had back in April, and see who were the frequent voters, and address those. I mean, send those up the mayors and everybody else. We can we can put things like in the grocery stores, the libraries, the drugstores, whatever. But I think we ought to target the, the frequent voters from the last election in April. You guys have the same thing. Go ahead, Greg. Well, I was just going to say, I think that Jason has a, a very good idea of uh, forming a committee. And I think Mark came up with the same idea. Forming a committee to uh, look into this would be the best step at this point rather than by debating out tonight. Because there's all kinds of different ways to try to sell something. Um, I, for one, would like to serve on that committee, that's awesome. Any other volunteers? Yes. Yes. And you try to accept the budget? Yes. So far we have Brett and Jim on a volunteer mic. Okay. What else? I know Mark, you're already on it. I think Mark Moore wants to volunteer. No, no, Mark. <laughs> this, uh, the marketing committee is probably going to be the most important committee we have here because just these little six bullet points that doesn't really cover everything. I mean, there's so many things uh, involved in this. I didn't know Greg was in the printing industry, which is fantastic. Uh, you know, uh, true insight there. He volunteers. I, I motion that Greg uh, is in the marketing committee. Uh, volunteers? I don't see any volunteers. Yeah, I missed a couple of those. Did I miss a couple of those? Yes. Yeah. So, so I, now, uh, do we limit it to two, three, four people? I, you know, Discussion on that. Uh, three. It, yeah. The, the the big thing is whoever serves on it has to. Uh, it has to be open meetings to the you know, public. You have to announce it. All the things to help uh, make it sunshine laws. So. Susan. Susan volunteering. And Mark, you're part of the marketing or just the budget. I was just the budget. Okay. And that was the reason this was brought forward is, is that uh, personally, uh, I, I understand that they, they go, oh, it's just theoretical, it's just the budget. You know what? It's hard numbers. Flat out. You know, we just can't say, oh, I think we're going to spend 12 grand. No. The light item numbers have to be solid. If Greg says it's going to cost 14 cents a page, that's what I want to know. And I'll put a projected budget from there. Uh, you know, I don't mind two cents off here and there, but keep in mind that if, if we print 10,000 copies at $3 a piece, it's $30,000, and we haven't got off the ground yet. 
So that's the, that's the big issue with the marketing committee is that I want to know how many co copies of the charter we're going to print and who we're going to send them to. And I like the Mary, uh, Mary's idea of targeting voters. That's fine, but we don't know how many there are. There might be 8,000. It's easy to find out. Let me yes. find that out. And I'll put together a projected budget for us. I, and, and believe me, I'm a cheapskate. Okay. And uh, so I use the Excel program, so it will all add up and subtract correctly, right, I believe, if I put the sum in right. All right, so let's clarify this. Um, are we having two commissions, are two separate commissions here? One for the budget and one for the marketing. Mark, you're just doing the budget. That's treasure. I'll handle it. I'll put the budget together. All right. So the rest of everybody, uh, uh, Greg, Jim, Mike, Susan, any other volunteers for that commission? Jim? And also to add to the marketing committee, there is a marketing is a big big process. If we've got five people on the committee, I mean, you, you've got to be able to solicit the prices, make all those decisions. Who do we target to? Do we go to the board? Go to the business people and ask them permission and so forth. So I think they're going to have their hands full. Right. I think the first thing they're going to have to do is figure out how they want to market and you know, go from there. Okay, so right now on the marketing committee, I have Greg, Jim, Mike, Susan, Janet, and Mary Jane. Is that correct? All right. Okay. Mark, you have a current treasurer's report done? Current treasurer's report is $9,900. Thank you, sir. Moving on. Old business, any miscellaneous old business that anybody wants to bring up before we get started on the preamble? I think everybody should have a copy um, that Lisa sent out from several people's hard work. Jim? Yeah, I'm sorry. I haven't quite done the treasurer report. I said the current report is $9,900, but did we spend any money? Is that the balance? Uh, Good stuff. No, no. Okay, so that's just what we had in the account. Hundred dollars. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Before we get moving on into other into business, I was corrected. Uh, we have a treasurer's report. Is this something? Again, you want to take a roll call vote to approve our general approval. Does anybody have any problems with the treasurer's report? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on. All right, let's get into the discussion finally on the charter. I'm uh, hoping that everybody's had a chance to review the model charter. Uh, I know Jason sent out a lot of information, and then Lisa and Ted worked on a few things, and hopefully we're all prepared to go forward. Lisa, do you want to go ahead and read the actual uh, preamble that was uh, uh, developed? We, the people of the city of Raytown, acknowledge each person to be endowed with self-sovereignty and therefore the natural right to life, liberty, and property in order to secure our protections under an improved government, enjoying the benefits and advantages of constitutional home rule now under the Constitution of the State of Missouri, we adopt the following charter. I open the floor for comments. I, I make a motion to adopt the one was there. Um, at the last meeting, we decided that we won't actually 
adopt anything at this current time that will just continue to build upon the charter as it's as it's written. That way we can actually make right. some minor changes. So but for for discussion purposes, I'm assuming you you're, you're yeah. <laughs> All right, any other comments please? I think it sounds too much like the United States Constitution and I think it needs to be similar. So people will read it and continue to read on through the chart. All right, Susan. I like the wording very much. I just wondered if the word constitutional and the SLS thing should be capitalized. Yes. Okay. It's a constitutional uh, idea in general. It's not pointing to a specific constitution. Okay. Other comments? Yeah, I think it's just that it's not a lot simpler. You know, I, I understand where that's coming from, but I truly think that that just needs to be very simple and very understandable. Suggestions then? I, I mean, uh, to a rewording? Yeah. And then, yeah, you would know, reset it. Okay, I'll come back to Mark. So you can get a lot more up to say if. <coughs> If the verbiage isn't in, uh, isn't in good standing, suppose uh, I personally like it. Uh, if it's too long, uh, we can also consider the rest of the articles that going forward through 17 might be too long because again, it goes back to the number of pages that the charter will encompass. But other than that, um, I like it. Yeah. Basically, it's 
you exist, and therefore it would make sense that you would own yourself, and therefore you're allowing these protections. Um, it's an extension of such. Um, and that's why I put it in there. Um, and it, it recognizes each person as an individual that is associated with this charter. As, as far as the, the United States Constitution, I would say to that, um, the Constitution does not grant rights, it only enumerates them. And um, as I write or, uh, later on in this article, under um, Article 2, actually, yes, um, it's, it's an issue of if the United States Constitution, these those are amendments to the Constitution, if, and they have been struck out before, if they just decide to strike out part of any of those particular amendments, then we do not acknowledge that in our charter. I think it's important that we acknowledge individuals' rights in our charter for any you know, particular reason that can come up. Um, also granted that uh, the United States Constitution and the state of Missouri Constitution do not overlap necessarily with the rights they enumerate. Um, so it can be a little bit of an issue there. That's all I have to I was just going to say it's only 59 words long. I don't think anybody's going to get scared off by that. Uh, let me go read it. But if um, I, I think it's a good preamble because if somebody wants to amend it and strike something, I suggest they go ahead and throw that motion out there and let us vote on it. I would like to see Ted Bowman's what he suggested the other night um, in writing the whole thing, not chopped up into something else. Okay. Charter. Well, in the Charter of Women and Illinois, it has a very simple one in there, which is, in order to provide for the government of the city of Rankin and secure the benefits and advantages of constitutional home rule, under the Constitution of the State of Missouri, the people of Rankin adopt the following charter. And it's very simple, and all you have to do is insert Rankin in the blanks. I will mention that as it reads there, uh, with a few exceptions where they do have meet the people of the city of Raytown, that seems to be a very standard preamble for all of our neighboring communities. So, makes it go ahead. It, it has become standard recently. I don't necessarily agree with it because it does not acknowledge the people um, themselves. It only acknowledges the government. Um, and that's not the point of the uh, preamble to, for instance, the Constitution. We actually acknowledge the people. So. Go ahead, Susan. I have to agree with Lisa. I think the mention of the sovereignty, which is an acknowledgement of the natural rights of citizens, is not worthy but in the Constitution for sake. Excuse me, but are we trying to make a political statement here? Yes. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the place for political statements. No, it's not. No. Any, any other comments? Uh, I personally would also like to see Ted's original writing. Uh, but again, I'm going to reiterate that this, the way the uh, uh, model does present it, it's, it's a very typical uh, entry for a preamble. And uh, we're going to, again, table this one for the next meeting. And uh, Ted, um, we'll ask Ted to bring his, in his original writing of it and compare it. But I, I personally think that um, it also needs to be simplified. I, I did like how Jason simplified it. Uh, it did um, take out quite a, um, quite a few wordage or items that seem to be um, basically being contested, I guess you might say. Nobody's in contest contention in the last portion of this. It's just the opening sentence, it seems like. So um, we're going to go ahead and move on then to Article one, one point one, and Lisa, would you read that one, please? 
The city, within the corporate limits, is now established, or is hereafter established, and on file in the office of the city clerk as provided by law, shall continue to be a municipal body politic and public corporation in perpetuity under the name of the city of Raytown. Comments? Susan? I have a question to clarify. I have notes here that indicate that someone is going to talk to the city clerk to learn what they have regarding corporate events. Yes. Can I can go ahead and verify that? Yes, we were able to do that. Lisa does have all that. I see. I've also had that question. So. Yeah, go ahead, Lisa. Um, as far as we're currently aware, um, the boundaries have not changed since the 60s. Um, and so we have what is on file currently, um, which we haven't found anything in between that is something that's not necessarily exist, but uh, we'll keep looking to make sure. Um, so what we have is the last one that is now. Any other comments to this? I'm going to make a few then. Um, in uh, the first part of the article, it says the city, and um, I, I, I guess my understanding of the city is the inhabitants you're speaking of, of the city, or are you talking about the city as the government of the city? Because in the um, example, that were given, it says the inhabitants of the city. And I just want to clarify that. If I can clarify that. Um, I took out inhabitants because then we start to compound uh, terms we're using. And so I was really hearing as the people who are the city or the board or the mayor, um, things of that nature, just so we don't have to compound terms um, if you would like to say it differently. Or that way in the just the definition section, which is something we were discussing earlier about whether or not we're Okay, but when, when it reads the inhabitants of the city of Raytown within the corporate limits, I, I don't know why we would need to add a definition for any of that. Um, to make it jive with the people, for instance, or to differentiate from the people that we just said. And then the other question I have is where it says, Hereafter established and on file in the city, in the office of the city clerk. Uh, in what I've seen is um, instead of and on, it says in the manner then file. Um, and that seems to be pretty typical also. So, I mean, no, I mean, the um, existing model does say in the manner of also been provided by law, and I was just wondering why uh, we would change something like that. I'm just thinking that the, the model that we're, we've been given to use by Mr. Marvison obviously has been gone over pretty legally uh, to some degree. I mean, uh, because the wordage in that <coughs> uh, model is pretty consistent with uh, charters from around our surrounding communities. And I think anytime we go to change wordage, we're just opening ourselves up to more legalism and more time for uh, that process to happen and then we're just going to incur more uh, costs of the city which to me is unnecessary. Go ahead, Lisa. I would just like to point out that I've looked through the model charter. Um, they, they call it the model charter. It's an example charter. Um, and I found numerous issues in there that I do not favor hold up in court and I question whether we should really base or whether or not really Exactly to the letter of what it, what it states in many places that we shouldn't 
probably keep an open eye as we go um, to make sure that we are not, in fact, just saying, saying something um, questionably. But um, in, in this case, I don't know if it matters um, specifically by law. Um, in the matter then provided by law, um, or if that's, I don't know. On file, I don't know if we need a law to say that it should be on file. Because if we just say on file, then it does not, should we say by law and on file um, to make sure we cover our bases, for instance? Um, because if there's no a law saying it doesn't have to be on file, for instance, it might be a problem. Well, I Again, we're saying it has to be on file according to the charter. So okay. that's really the charter. Yeah, go ahead. You said something about inserting people, but we're talking about the boundaries of the city, per se, not the people. Correct? I, I mean, I would agree with that, but is the city defined by the boundaries? Right. Boundaries. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the people in it, just the boundaries of the city itself. Okay. Well, maybe I opened up the can of words, but do we have any other comments then? I mean, am yeah. I just seeing the wrong things? Go ahead, Greg. Is there really any question in one point one? being raised here, or I don't want to sound overly critical, but it sounds like there's nitpicking going on here. And it's quite clear that the city within the corporate limits is now established, or their actor established, and an on file in the office of the city clerk is provided by law, shall so continue to be a municipal body politic and public corporation perpetuity under the name of the city of Greytown. That's crystal clear. Why? Why are we splitting hairs and spending a lot of time discussing something that everybody agrees they understand? I just want to make sure that everybody agrees, Greg. Well, I, I certainly agree. Go ahead, Jen. I'd like to know if there's a question somebody has, please ask it so we can answer it for you. Um, two things. Number one uh, is the question, and I'm not certain about it, is the use of corporation um, as opposed to corporate. Uh, corporation applies to me. Uh, if you are incorporated into an incorporation, it's like a business, um, and it becomes an independent uh, personality, so to speak. So I'm not sure if that's correct or, or incorrect. I'm, I'm just throwing that out. Why would we make that change specifically? I guess I'm asking this what Public corporation. The words kind of mean something. Hold on a second. I was, and then I had to come up with something else. Well, go ahead and do it. Well, uh, that, that was my question. Why did we make that change? That's what I'm asking. From corporate and perpetuity, public, politic and public corporation, as opposed to politic and corporate and perpetuity. You see what I'm saying? We just changed that one word. I'm asking why. Basic, go ahead and answer well, that. Are you working off of something in particular that um, you're going to change? Yeah, the, the model right there. Well, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't, as I've understood, we've been using multiple examples to be going off just to the model charter as the only change. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, well, I didn't want to be my mistake, but however, I think it means exactly the same thing. I've seen another charge where they use that and the other word in the same. I'm not challenging that, just no, asking it again. I'm just saying that um, other charges seem to be just about which way it's used, and that it seems to be the same thing that we use. I just thought I could come up with that. I do want to share something, an example with the, with the commission uh, that I think kind of explains a little bit about what Steve was saying. I'm trying to be very careful about our wording. Um, years ago, um, there was a they were trying to protect workers or migrant workers that went from state to state, picking fruit and vegetables. And uh, so Congress wrote a law, they, used, they described them as seasonal workers. Um, because it's what it seemed they were. And when they wrote that law, uh, it said that when they were out of 
another season that they could collect unemployment. And so consequently, immediately when that passed, teachers said, well, we're seasonal workers because their contract in reality did end and started a different date even though they were collecting a check 12 months out of the year. And so, teachers across the country lined up to collect unemployment in the summertime, and many people said, well, that's, you can't do that. But the fact was, it was true. They were seasonal workers, and many people, like myself, did collect checks in the summertime until Congress quickly uh, rushed back to uh, Washington and changed that wording because uh, it was in reality the truth. When you use the word seasonal, it includes teachers because it was. So we have to be very careful in simple words that we use because they can be misconstrued. Um, so I just throw that out. That's, I think that the seed was kind of alluding to. I'll take the other comment. Greg, Jason. Thank you. I, um, I have no problem one point one. I mean, we have, and I understand the concern that number words and such. I think, I think you have to do that. And I think that's one of the reasons why. You know, you should, you should look at you should look at other city charters like we have been doing in the model charter and things such as that. Uh, that, that that's an excellent reason why, but um, not to harp on this, but I think when I say the word public corporation, it's called incorporation of the city. Uh, that's the meaning of it. So I mean, I'm perfectly fine with that word, and I'm fine with one point one. And I, I wanted to state that. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to assume we have a consensus that nobody else has disagreed. And then we'll leave it in as it is. So we'll move on to. Okay, go ahead, Joe. So, the first one we tabled. The second one, if we, we have to voice a concern about that, for it will be tabled or all of these will be tabled. To be voted on as a whole at a later time. Yeah, I, I, I think what, what we've done, what we've try to set up is the fact that we would read through them and uh, get them all set up in, in, in order so that obviously we can go back and readdress them if wordage or something else uh, as we go through all of the charter would require us to go back and through and maybe make an adjustment in, in the wordage or something like that. Uh, I, I guess we're really not uh, tabling any of them in the fact that on the preamble we're basically just waiting for some more information and, and some possible uh, rewording. I would like to see Jason's uh, adjustment in, in, in that as an alternative uh, and actually look at these side by side when we have difficulties. Um, but as we finish one, or as, as we assume that we finished one, then we're I mean, then we're we're technically okay with that unless something comes up. So um, so it can be gone back to yes, it can no, definitely be gone back to. Okay. That's why well, that's why I wasn't decision. sure because I was but at, sure at, of that. At, at this time, at, okay. at this time, it seems like we are in agreement pretty well on one, where at some point in time we could vote on it. At a reason, my understanding. Okay. Okay, 1.2. A description of the boundaries of the city shall be attached to this charter, shall be promptly updated as those boundaries change. During our last during our last meeting, it was suggested that we say something in here to the effect of the title above. However, one, this may not be legal as updating the document attached to it, and therefore technically part of the charter would be illegal changing of the charter itself, and two, we should, it should be considered that attempting to keep up with multiples, multiple documents, insert one document in one place may be unnecessary and potentially complicating an actual, an actual redundancy. This is um, something Tim wanted to point out, in fact. Um, uh, since it is a public document, then as suggested to be specified under the Grove Street in 4.3, it would be both made promptly updated and be available at well to the public anyway. Thus, the question becomes the same thing for section one. I would say it's not necessary. I agree. I agree. Is there any disagreement at this point with that? 
So when he's 1.2 out, we move on 2.1. All right, number two, suspicion and power. Our just looked from the preamble. This, these serve as explanations and guides for the flow, permissions, and limitation of powers of the city to prevention of extraneous more rule and guarantee by the rights. rights. Um, Ted and I had some discussion on, on this. We weren't quite in agreement. I since talked to other people, and then pretty much it ended at the end back in. Um, so, uh, not end back in, but sections of this as we were discussing. So, um, you know, I'll put it for you. The authority of city governance shall only reside in the delegated by the people governed. The powers of the city shall be further constrained by this charter, the Constitution of the State of Missouri, the Constitution of the United States of America, and its Bill of Rights, and permissions conferred by law and consistent with those constraints. Um, this is the part about the flow of powers that the city. It shows the, you know, the hierarchy there. Um, and eventually down to 2.4 to specify that the city has all of the powers. I'll open up the floor for comments. And again, this is a substantial departure from what we've read in other charters and a departure from uh, the uh, model charter that we gave. Very great. Mr. Chairman, I, I agree with you that it's a departure, but I think it's a necessary departure that it's something that we want to make a statement and be clear on. This is a charter that is divided with power from the people, and therefore it doesn't hurt to say so. Charlotte, did you have a question? Yeah, because this one starts out the authority of the city government shall wholly reside in and be delegated by the people government, and then. In the model one, the city shall have the powers, the General Assembly of the State of Missouri, the city shall have all powers the General Assembly of the State of Missouri has authority to confer upon any city. And so, what you're stating in the first one, that it's delegated by the people. And it just doesn't seem consistent. I know that please answer the like if you said um, as far as the powers of the city are um, do reside in and are delegated, delegated by the people, that means that they are the ones bringing the charter for it, they can vote on the charter, they can vote on rescinding the charter or amending the charter any time in the future. Um, if you read down to point four, which we're sitting ahead of it, um, it goes to how the um, Commissions of the city, that's what she just sort of quoted. The city shall otherwise have all powers of general assembly of the state of Missouri has the authority to confer, confer on any city, which is what we discussed before. So um, we're just handling how this works, basically. This is the functional part of the document. Um, so the, the citizens have the power to create charter, to create ordinals, and so on and so forth. And they have the power to create ordinances eventually and um, change or elect officials, things of that nature. So that's pretty much what that, that means right there. Okay. Susan? Well, I was just, I like it. I think it's a reference to that, that the government is for by and of the people. And this does state that very Thank you. Jim? Well, I'm in disagreement. Um, first of all, we were state first. We were we had a state constitution first. We become a city or even a county through the grace of the, of the state, not by the people. Um, if, for example, uh, this city did something that perhaps the state didn't agree with, they could take away our right to be a city. Uh, that's been attempted to be done before, Lynn Creek and, 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 and the Ozark area. So it wouldn't be the first. So it shows that, that uh, the people aren't just creating this government. It, 
it's being done through the Constitution of the State of Missouri. And that's where the authority originates, not from the people. Um, and then it's a little bit confusing when it goes on and says that you should be put constrained by this chart, the Constitution of Missouri. Um, uh, it's, it's the Constitution in the state and the, and the General Assembly that, that allow us to be a state in the first place. So I, I don't think that's right. I'm, I'm just questioning it. Well, I think the, uh, the sections that come after 2.2 and 2.3 clearly state that the city shall otherwise have all powers of the General Assembly of the State of Missouri has the authority to confer upon any city. I think that what you're saying is the state has the power to do this, and I think that this section in 2.3 specifically states that. Um, I, well, no, it's, it's, it's not. It's not useless verbiage. I think it's important that we do take a stand to account religion, ethnicity, race, color, sex, gender, sexual orientation, creed, religion, or disability. It, and and by the person inhabit or visit the holding authority over securing their own life. I think that those are important, important thoughts, and I think that they are important to be stated. We're not saying that we are seceding from the state of Missouri. We're saying that these are our beliefs, that we believe in these things, that these things are truths that we hold, that, that they are conferred to us by the state of Missouri, by the Constitution of the United States. And in the end of it, we also say, the city shall otherwise have all powers of the General Assembly, the state of Missouri has the authority to confer upon any city. It's basically a tipping of the hat to the state of Missouri and saying, yes, you are the state of Missouri, you are in charge. So there's nothing really confrontational here. It just simply lays out that this is why this was brought to us. Other comments? Well, I don't see anything confrontational at all. I mean, then we got our introduction, and then when we jump down to 2 2, two 3, it basically tips the hat to the state of Missouri Constitutional kind of Assembly. Um, I don't see where they would have an issue with that at all. Um, because most people don't tip their hat anymore. So uh, at least it's on paper. I'd just like to add, I think this, this does a wonderful job for those concerned with uh, the understandability of the document of clarifying this in a different way. Thank you. Other opinions, Jim? I, I guess I would just conclude that if we were only on the second article and if we continue to. <coughs> Make points up and beyond what other um, charters do, you know. In the end, when we, we do this every single article, by the time we get to the end of it, this can be construed as a, some kind of a public statement and, and not an attempt to, to just get a general charter passed. Charlie? Well, I guess my confusion lies in all the verbiage because you have a set in the model chart, you have. A section one or two point one and two point two, which are about three four sentences, and then you're going to add basically two more. And it's not that I don't agree with these that we have all these and stuff like this, but I, I agree with, with the others that I still think it should be in here, and I think it can be concise. And, and that's what it says in the law of charter, too. That um, the powers of the city should not be liberally construed. The specific mention of a particular power in this charter should not be construed as limiting the powers of the city. So we're not limiting anything. But yet we're spelling it out verbatim over here. And, if, and honestly, if something gets left out, other ones that we were making in that. So, and actually, if you get into Article 3, it starts to get into the mechanics of how the cities run and 
you no longer are making any statements. So I don't really think it's superfluous. I think it does set the tone for the charter. I think it's important. I don't think it's overdone. I think it's taking up one sheet of paper front and back. And to try to say that we are continually doing this through the whole charter when we're only up to the second chapter or whatever, second article. And we're looking at article three coming up with six and a half, seven pages of more title. Um, is somewhat misleading. So why don't we just go forward? I don't see anything where anybody said there's something in there that they find offensive, where they find it that it's untrue. So why are we, once again, it seems to me like we're, we're, we're picking at this thing. There's some really neat stuff coming up in Article 3 to fight about, to, to be honest with you. Let's go there. All right, Lisa, go ahead. Um, I, I would agree. Um, article 2, uh, Paragraph 3, Section 3, Article 2, Striking my commentary is half the page. I think we at least owe the citizens a respect of acknowledging them um, and what they want to do and, and their own um, liberties before we get to 40 pages of what the government can do. Um, so that's just uh, my thoughts on the matter. It's only half the page, the rest of it's going to be plenty long. So. <coughs> All right. Um... I'm going to do something here. I mean, it seems like we've talked about this now, and there seems to be a split um, thought on this. I mean, I, I would like to just see a show of hands that actually agree with what got worded here versus a show of hands that won't agree with it, and that would, would, would prefer something similar, more in line with um, the model charter and what our, our neighboring communities have done. So, uh, yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. Are you, are you referring to the entire Article 2? Yeah, the entire Article 2. 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. So, okay. Yeah, I have we're going to go through that, I would like to um, read my commentary here before Article 2.2. Um, which is some explanation for why I thought it was important to add 2.2. Uh, given that the state constitution and statutes and the federal constitution are in fact living documents, which are altered from time to time, article sections and sentences are added, edited, and struck, it should follow that listing the basic rights of the people of the city in this document ensures that, should, should any rights enumerated in those other documents, which it should be mentioned do not currently mirror each other, either in whole or in part, nor are all inclusive, be struck. Our own citizens will still be guaranteed those rights. For another example, if Missouri as a whole should once again secede from the Federal Union, because it has before, or if Jackson County should secede from the rest of the state or union, in the vein of what is currently being presented and considered attempted in both California and Colorado, our city will be able to keep on going essentially as is without problems arising. Oh, gosh, I guess it's the native of Missouri or something. Um, and these basic rights will still be guaranteed to our citizens. Larger powers from the rise and fall of our community can make a clear statement about protecting its own. This part of the document is therefore not just for show, but, excuse me, but it's in fact a sincere gesture and a guarantee. All right, so with that said, I would like to see a show of hands who are in favor of the current <coughs> wording of Article 2, please. As is. As is. Okay, hold on a second. Amendment of 1964. Um, 
and again for trying to restrict that to, to restate that amendment. So um, I know my wife's on our city charter. Jason, go ahead. I mean, even though I even though I like I mean everything in here is a fact. I mean in terms of the liberties we have, like Mr. McDonald was saying, you know, um, even though I like it, I mean I, I think it would be wise maybe to try to at some point change some of this so we can get more support, kind of like what you alluded to earlier, uh, Mr. Gunther. I, I think that um, that would be a good idea just to make more folks feel comfortable uh, with it, even though you know I voted in the affirmative for such. So that's my point. Lisa and Greg, and then we'll move on. Um, to address Michael's uh, point, um, that is that they, some of them, not all of them, are guaranteed by the state and federal constitution. They are definitely not all covered. Um, for instance, I don't know, sexual orientation. Um, but my, my point and what I had read earlier about is if we, if the United States government should suddenly dissolve one day, which is only the third, not necessarily everything is covered, we just keep going on and not have to worry about any of those issues as far as rights are concerned for uh, protection. Um, and, and that was uh, an issue because that has happened before. And so things were left very much up in the air and it was, well, there were a lot of problems with it. Um, as to address, um, Jim's issue. Um, I, I, I don't understand which rights you would know people, for instance, um, I don't know which place he's comfortable with it, not stating what we know. Well, I think that it's, it's 64, simply said the race color, greater sex, um, or, or gender, period. And um, we're going far beyond that here. So you're saying you would deny somebody their uh, a job? Well, I, I, I might consider this to say that, that in, the, in the city of Raytown, if we wanted to allow same sex marriage, we could do that because we're not going to discriminate people because of uh, sex and gender. So, uh, yeah, I would consider it that way. I'm not sure that everybody in the city would agree that we should do that. Awesome. All right, last comment, Greg. We're going to move on to three. Uh, my other comment is I think we pretty much talked to the bed every time we see I think you have to accept that the MML, in my opinion, is not the not written down as holy writ. And that they are not a specimen model that we should have to follow. Uh, I, there's some things that I see in here that came straight out of the MML book. Uh, Mr. Jason and I had quite a conversation about Jason Reno. Um, it's coming up in this next section. And there's there's things that I see are terrible weaknesses in it, and I I did not run under the, under the assumption that I want to grab what the NML tells us to do, and that's it. I want to do something specific for Raytown because Raytown is unique, and we should not ignore that in our proceedings. So it's not right, in my opinion, to say, well, this is diverging from what the NML says to do, as if a great crime has been committed, because no crime has been committed. Simply somebody has a better way of doing it, at least in this particular case, as far as I'm concerned. But you're ready, I'm ready to go forward to I need to do one last comment on that. In the very beginning, when we all got together to write this charter, a lot of the public stated very clearly, and I think members of the people who ran for this charter also, including me, said we do not want to depart greatly from what we already have. And so it's not about the MML charter, it's about staying close to where we got is today, not a fast change Okay. Um, I do have one clarification, Charlie reminded me. I, uh, there, we had six that affirmed this. We had six other people that did not get any chance to vote. So, uh, of the uh, of the board of the commission, how many of those would not be in favor of this, but going to a sim uh, simpler uh, article two? So, would you restate that question, please? Okay. Um, 
Uh, uh, originally, I asked that we would have a show of hands for those that were in favor, and then eventually a show of hands that did, did not agree with this article as it was written, that would prefer something simpler. And we did vote, or we didn't have a show of hands for those that supported it. We never had a show of hands of the people that would oppose it or would prefer something similar. So I would like to see that show of hands of people that would uh, prefer something simpler that, that are in favor of this as it is currently written. So all those not in favor, show of hands. So we are split six to six, just to make it consistent. Lisa, go ahead. Um, this is an issue. Uh, it's not an issue of uh, changing anything. Nothing is being changed. We're just stating facts, basically, um, that I can tell. We're just ensuring certain things that are currently theoretically ensured. Uh, I think it behooves us to spend half a page on that because the rest of people think it's not about just the thinking the government is, it goes on. So, um, should I start on? We will go to Article 3, please. Where power is best in government. Um, talking with Teresa, I may change from board of aldermen to city council would cost something, primarily assumed to be credit related in nature, but the assumption is unknown. So apparently that's still up in the air as far as what we choose to do about that. I don't know if we came to the real consensus the last time. Yes, Greg. I, I think that's somewhat misleading because if you change from a Fourth class city to a charter, and you're going to make this wholesale change anyway. Whether you use a little bit more color for the word city council or the word board of all is going to be, it's not even worth really discussing, to be honest with you, the cost of that. It's all okay. electronically now. I mean, so it, it really comes down to a matter of preference. And I think it's something that we would probably be wise, if not this meeting, maybe the next meeting, try to put this one matter behind us, which we're going to the city council board of all because I know when I got Jason's uh, information that he sent to everybody, all through it, he's mentioned the Board of Alderman. I'm seeing city council there all the time. And I'm ready to go ahead and debate what is accepted by the people, what people understand, what people recognize. And I'd be willing, I'd take a, a, a very unscientific poll, but it certainly did back up what I was suggesting. That the city council would be better terminology than the Board of Alderman. Okay, uh, I'm gonna, in the interest of trying to get some of this done though, I mean, since the words are interchangeable, is this something that we really need to address right now? I mean, we did, I mean, since no. this is a living document, we're not voting one way or the other. It, it, it can be interchangeable up to the final day when we buy right I agree. As far as that, I'm just thinking for the simplicity of going forward as, as we write other sections and every time we refer to it, at least we all be on the same page. And I'm willing to accept that the majority of the vote for it and I'll vote for it all. I'm not going to pretend that they didn't vote for it. Well, and then that's why I want to take an open discussion now as to if do we want to get this out of the way right now? We don't want to wait until the whole commission. Yeah, we should go. Okay, let's wait until we have all 13 of us here. All right. So, it, I mean, I, we, I think we should uh, take care of it as soon as possible because we don't need to be rewriting certain things all the time. We just need to say it one way, but I agree that we need all 13 here. So, with 3.1, hold on a second. Go ahead, Joe. Um, okay, we have Article 3, and that's what Jason did. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, I. Uh, what I sent out and I provided copies for today is um, was Article 3. That's sent out an email earlier. Uh, this one right here um, has some, some comments that uh, Lisa included um, that she wanted, I guess, wanted to bring up. To, is that correct, Lisa? Um, what I did was incorporate what you had into mind, and I think I kept. Okay. Because what I, what, what I sent out was, and if you don't mind, Mr. Chair, I'd kind of like to go through this because um, at least for the first few sections of the last meeting, I think we got up to 3.4. Um, I heard suggestions and some things that we talked about as a, as a commission need to be changed. And so what happened was I, I edited that and then sent that back out. 
Um, so this document right here, it was sent out, um, and the one that was the same one I presented last meeting with the exception of the changes that I made notes that uh, of what we discussed. So that's what this document is right here. I just wanted to be clear on what we were looking at here. Well, and I've read through. I've read through both of them, and they seem to be very similar. There's a few words here and there. Um, there are a few points that Jason had where it's what we call the city council that need to be changed and some other things. But um, anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, allow Jason to go ahead and read through his uh, and where, he, where he's uh, headed. So go ahead. All right. Thank you. Um, well, uh, like Greg mentioned earlier, um, the discussion versus BOA versus the city council needs to have, but I will uh, just reread through this and I guess we can open each one up to comment and discussion. Um, where have powers vested, section 3.1, uh, and obviously if the title, first off, if we do decide on the Board of Aldermen, this Article 3 will be labeled the Board of Aldermen, if we obviously decide uh, city council, it will be labeled city council, but Section 3.1 of the work powers vested. It says, except as the, this charter provides otherwise, all powers of the city of Raytown shall be vested in the Board of Aldermen. This board shall provide for the exercise of these powers and for the performance of all duties and obligations imposed on by on the city of Raytown by law. And again, pretty much this really almost comes word for word from the MML document. Uh, I thought it was pretty simple. It, it's something that seems to be pretty concise and just explains obviously that that this that group is, is the one that's making the legislative process possible. All right, I'm gonna just kind of open up this floor uh, to the floor pretty quick. This it seems to be a boilerplate, pretty simple deal. Uh, Lisa, you got to come. Um, the only changes I made, Jason, when I just sort of looked at it and put it in my um, are I took out of of Raytown just to keep it consistent with the rest of the document and keep that on space in case you know of Raytown should end up being like a page long if you write it 500 times in the thing. But, um, and I also capitalized charter, but just minor quick changes like that. Um, I, I think those are the only two quick changes I made. So, so just real quick, I noticed that you took out the city of Raytown, you, I guess just put just the city, it looks like. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And capitalized charter. Go ahead, Charlie. Well, the concern I have with that is that, and granted, city will be referenced throughout, and I have to go back to the beginning, you know, where we kind of define that, but I don't know. I, I'd like to see it have city of right now, because then you have, especially where it's powers vested, you want to make sure that you're talking about the city of right now and the Board of Aldermen. I'm hearing some comments. Let's see anything down there. Please come here. <laughs> Go ahead, Nancy. can speak to that. That's uh, why it's the city that the word city is capitalized, so we're using it as a legal definition. And that way it can only be in reference to one thing. So if we do need other definitions at the beginning, there's going to be no confusion if it's capitalized, which city is referring to, and we're not you know, referring to something else or something. Other comments? Yeah, uh, remember we're dealing with the public, and I agree with Charlotte. I think that the word Raytown should be included. Uh, city can be anything to them. Raytown is Raytown. Susan? Article 1 go back to that. It says the city, begins the city. And as uh, encouraging that in the name of the city of Raytown, it's our advice and draws that all together. Terms and definitions, we work through the whole document, so I just left that section out for now. Um, 
says we really not come back and have a whole room of things we're not to find. Um, so although the way he's worded in 1.1 seems like it may be pretty obviously defined in the city, I tried doing the same thing with the people and the board later on because otherwise we're going to go to the board of aldermen of the city of Raytown and that's going to just, like the document's going to be 15 pages longer and the expense is going to be greater. Um, so I don't know how, how specific you want to get in every single instance mentioned of um, the city or the board or, or these sorts of things. Um, that's what I was trying to avoid when I, I did this, just so that um, they, were, they would be capitalized and then they would go back to one thing only. Um, I, I don't know if it would get particularly to worry about, but it sounds to me like a really, really great job how long this thing's going to get worse. If we cut that out, that would be up somewhere. Susan. I can't give you a specific example, but it's commonly in legal documents to say, here and after shall be referred to as. Alright, um, we need a consensus. Do we keep it in or do we take out a right down? Well, since we're going through it one by one, I would think we'll start here. Okay. Yeah, I know. So, is it the opinion of the commission to leave it city of Raytown or just refer it to the city? Right. Well, I think since it's called it out in 1.1, what the city is, and since it is a charter about the city of Raytown, I would think we're a city capitalized. I would have to agree with that. Any other? Ben? I agree too. This is something that we're going to spell out to begin with. And it will cut the document down quite a bit if we don't put that in. Alright, so Jason, do you have any objections to that? Alright, I will um, work with the will of the uh, commission. Okay, so at 3.1, we're either going with the Jason version or the Lisa version. No. And so what you asked was which one, you know, I know, either city or city of Raytown, but are you asking all of us that question, or no? I'm asking all of us. Everything. Okay. So that's where I kind of get confused. Okay. It's either you know because people want I guess the only difference between Jason and the one that Lisa did was she incorporated the idea of the city and she capitalized the charter. So in, in this instance, it's a matter of do we accept the one that Lisa made her corrections on are Jason. So, okay. I mean, um, I'm in favor right now of doing one that Lisa put out there, and I would like to see a show of hands as to how many would accept it that way. So we can move on. On the Lisa. On the Lisa version. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. That's general consensus. Okay. I mean, city would be just city, not city or right town. And the charter will be capitalized as it's a formal document. So, all right. Is there anybody opposed before I carry it? Okay, so you're opposed. Okay, I got one. Okay. Um, Great. There's some issues coming forward where I, I would ask them almost consistently maybe go to a motion with a second so that we can get a, 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 a hard tally on this because it's kind of wishy washy. Some of these questions, some of them are pretty black and white on this. Something like that, I have no problem with. But I, I would just ask that to be good. And, I, and I'm not talking about finalized document, but actually, if we say, okay, the consensus says this is what we're going with, we have to back. Okay, okay. just be not. So we can do basically a first reading is what you're saying, right? Somewhat, if you want, to, you know, for. But my, my point is that if we're going to be amending this, so for when we come back to revisit it another time, we know where we are. So. Lisa. Um, can I just ask Jason? 
I did not have a chance to much about him. Uh, what I had done was um, the, I had looked at the MML uh, example charter and it jumped around like here, there, and elsewhere. And so I kind of just pre organized it. Well, that's past 3.1, so let's just get down to 3.1. All right. Um, Lisa, will you read your 3.1, please? That's the one that you're going with. Oh, um, same thing. Uh, where powers best to Exactly. Except as this charter otherwise provides, all the powers of the city shall be vested in the board of aldermen. The board shall provide for the exact exercise of these powers and the performance of all of these obligations imposed on the city by law. Thank you. And the, the, so we'll call first reading. All right. Jason, go ahead and go with your section 3.2. Okay. And what we'll do, I think, is on 3.2, there's, there's um, A, B, and C on my part. Um, and again, I, 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 uh, it looks like the difference between Lisa and my version is that she has a section D for for Alderman, um, and that and that uh, three point two, at least according to the Mel document, was composition, eligibility, election, and terms, and so um, the compensation expenses in this is in a separate section. It looks like the difference is between her and her and mine is that she had a section D to include that. So I'll just go ahead and. Go through one by one here. Section 3.2, uh, composition, eligibility, election, and terms. Composition, it says, there shall be a board of aldermen consisting of 10 members elected by registered voters of the respective wards. And it says, as provided in the nominations and elections article of this charter. So, obviously, the nominations and elections um, article has not been written yet, but within that, um, Within that section, uh, there's going to be more uh, information about uh, those types of situations. So that's why that was included. That was also um, the same situation with the UML Charter. So I guess we'll stop right there with each, set, uh, with each uh, point, if you guys prefer, and discuss. Has anybody, uh, for one, I mean, the section is 3.2, Composition, Eligibility, Election, and Terms. Uh, Lisa had just uh, 3.2 as the alderman, uh, and then the same thing is below it. But uh, uh, the wording on composition is almost exactly the same. So, so I mean, to me, uh, <coughs> This seems fairly easy to go ahead and, um, and is there anybody in, in opposition to the composition? Mr. 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 Chair, uh, not in the composition, but that's one additional point that I felt too. This whole article is titled the Board of Aldermen. So when section 3.2 talks about composition, eligibility, election, and terms, obviously it's talking about the Board of Aldermen. So I, I do disagree with having section 3.2 labeled as Alderman because the whole article is about Alderman. In fact, uh, in my email, and I don't want to get you off the head, but you'll see how my suggestion later on is wanting to make it just about Alderman and taking the concern of the mayor out of that into a separate article. So, and I'm not jumping ahead, I'm just stating that, you know, that this is kind of implied, pretty simply, that this is about the Board of Alderman since it's within that suggested article. Charlie? I'd actually agree with that because I think the section should be called. Composition, eligibility, and election terms. Um, and maybe even add compensation, but we got to talk about that one too. Um, but I do agree with Jason. Lisa? My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, when I was going through it and trying to reorganize everything, I just probably wasn't going to that reason. But there is one point to make that the mayor technically is a member of the board of officers. I don't know if it's going to another section. And the only reason I suggested that was because. Um, my understanding from the last meeting was, and yes, I put that in here. It's also mentioned within the within the board of Alderman later on that the mayor is, is serves on this board. Um, but um, Mr. Gunther suggested that we have a separate article um, for the mayor. I think you were going off a um, another sample charter that had a separate article for it. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is I felt uncomfortable 
speaking too much about the mayor uh, in terms of um, some of the elections and turn situation later on within Article 3 that was just going to get reiterated within Article 4 if Article 4 is, if this commission does decide that they want to separate Article 4 the mayor. Well, and my, my thought on that was uh, based on the fact that having reviewed seven or eight different charters, uh, the mayor was very consistently uh, separated out uh, with his own article and um, and there are differences between the mayor and the government's responsibilities. So in order to keep it clean, one article addresses the government, one article addresses the mayor, and I think that's a good way to be consistent. And, and I'm fine with that too. I mean, like I said in my email, I, I wrote down, well, we'll get to that later. But anyway, uh, I'm fine with that as well. So. Is anybody in disagreement then that Section 3.2 will be called Composition Eligibility Election in Terms? Uh, any references to the mayor will be contained in Article 4 after this article. We're okay with that. Right. Okay, and then are we all okay then with the composition part of this article? Moving on. Oh, thank you. Uh, Janet? I, I did this thing. Okay, hey, hold on, Jim. I got to your first thing. Um, my question is, um, Article 3, it says the Board of Aldermen, but then we're going to have 3.4 under that same article for the mayor. No. Oh, okay. 3.4 will be the mayor. Were you asking? Were you asking if there were any questions or issues at all regarding anything under the uh, subtitle composition? That's correct. Okay. Um, seems to me we haven't made a determination on term limits yet. Um, might want to consider saying that there shall be a board of aldermen consisting of up to ten members. Well, I, I don't think that would be consistent with having five boards, though. I mean, with two aldermen, board of aldermen, or uh, council people, maybe. Well, the, the, the possibility exists, does it not, that there would not be anyone running for or uh, representing any two people necessarily representing a board? That's correct, but I think there's also what a part in here that allows us to put in for vacancies. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. There's a part that talks about in case of emergency and such like that. Thank you. All right. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, Article 3, Section 3. Yes, sir. I'll make a motion. You want to make a motion? <laughs> I'll make a motion. Second. 